guys, boy DJ Wolf here. Um, got a couple things on my mind besides this forgot to ass traffic. Um, uh, I uh, was watching a story about this football player. I forgot the name of the school. He uh, was out, uh, black guy, young black man. He was out playing uh, Pokemon Go. All right, I think he was 20, 21 years old, something like that. Uh, football player. I think he's, I think he's offensive uh, lineman. I'm not sure, and I'm not sure about the school because I'm driving. Name escapes me. But anyway, he, uh, he was uh, out in the park, and the police were called about a report about a bank robber that fit his description. And he, uh, actually, well, anyway, I guess he was like three miles, uh, less than three blocks away from the bank or whatever, something like that. that was the story. So the next thing I know, uh, I, as I continue to read, uh, I actually saw a video. The video showed the cops. It was two different videos, by the way, of uh, the cops with the, the video uh, tags on their arm. Um, on there that they have to wear the cameras well anyway with the cameras in itself that uh that they're required to wear one of them was uncovered the other one was partially covered with their hand and i'm not sure why the fuck would you do that shit are you thinking there's a chance that something might pop off and you don't want anybody to see it you know i thought that was bullshit you're not supposed to cover those cameras those cameras are supposed to be seen at all time every time you step out there and you go to any event regarding a, a, a call, for every call that you go to, that camera is supposed to be on and you're supposed to be wearing it. You know. Anyway, so they stop them. They explain to them that they were looking for a suspect that fit his description. And they check this information, uh, his uh, head, because he had on headphones. Initially, he didn't stop because he had on headphones. And initially, he didn't hear the officers when they uh, when they tried to approach him, and then they threw their guns at him. So I'm thinking you drew your guns at that guy who had headphones on, and you know he didn't hear you. Okay. Which, to me, sounded like it would have been a red flag in itself. And he may have made a wrong move with the headphones on. They would have shot him. Uh, for, I mean, but fortunately, they didn't. Thank God. And fortunately, he didn't do anything stupid. So they checked him out. He was playing. Um, and he eventually wrote uh, uh, something on Facebook. I, think, I guess he typed up something about Facebook about it. And he kind of realized part of the error of his way was he had his headphones on anyway. But, you know... The, but the fact that they, you know, immediately was or thinking that, yeah, okay, he might be a possible suspect. He basically was uh, uh, saying that we get, need to get to know each other and have a general uh, understanding of who we are as people. You know, not assuming that everybody's bad guy who's black, who looks like a suspect. Is not everybody who is black that may look like a suspect is a criminal. Not everybody who's a cop is bad. So, I also uh, wanted to talk a little bit more about my feelings about uh, race because I kind of feel like, honestly, in over my 50 years. My existence, <laughs> thank God. I uh, I've seen how the way people act, particularly white people, and I'm not knocking people because of color. I knock people because of actions, and they use the sometimes some people use the color as an advantage to try to disadvantage you. Prime example. About a month ago, I was at work and I was coming out of men's room, and this white gentleman, he kind of like walked casually fast past me, 
didn't even look, okay? And I was, I'm stepping out the bathroom, okay? Out the door as I come out. And I usually walk kind of slow because there's a lot of traffic going across there. So I walked out slowly. And he just zoomed right by me and hit me on my shoulder, just tapped me, you know, running in my shoulder. Didn't say excuse, didn't even look. He kept right on going. I was like, this motherfucker here. You know, and my thing is, I thought that was so fucking rude. That was so rude. It really was rude of him to do that. You know, because if I'm coming out and you on your way in, you should be trying to look out, uh, you know, for me. Why is this food riding my ass? Why do I go through this every single night out here in, in the DMV? You got people riding your tail. Like, like there's no tomorrow. Like you're never going to get home. You know. But in any case, um, I just thought it was just, just kind of rude, man. I had one guy about six years ago, matter of fact. Might have been six, seven years ago. And this guy literally... Try. I mean, I mean, he walking behind me. He literally walked up my heels almost. Like, what the fuck? I almost cussed this guy out. Uh, excuse me. Really? He was rude as fuck. You know, like I guess, I guess I wasn't walking fast enough for this motherfucker. Yeah, I said motherfucker because I meant that. It was just rude. I mean, sometimes me, I said, I know people said, well, you. Shitting out your religion and blah blah blah, and I understand what they're, when people say it because they're right. But on the other hand, I think that was extremely rude for somebody to do that. You know, because you don't know if I had an affliction or not that may not allow me to walk as fast as you. But he was walking very fast, and he was like, "Damn, they hit me, really, motherfucker!" I just do right behind me. I was like, "I'm like, really?" So why people? I mean, especially in the DMV, they, you know. Let me break this down. I was on vacation last week out in Virginia Beach, and I enjoyed it. I immensely enjoyed it. It was probably the most relaxing beach trip I think I've ever had. You know, between Virginia Beach, Ocean City, and Myrtle Beach, and I've been to all three of them. Uh, honestly, Virginia Beach and Myrtle Beach are two of my favorite spots. I love them both. But Virginia Beach has been my more my favorite spot because it don't take as long. It takes half the time to get there. Uh, I mean, less than half the time to get there as it does if I go to Murrow Beach. And it seems a lot less time to get there than they do uh, uh, Ocean City, which is actually two and a half, three hours. You know. But I don't have to ride along that crazy bridge. You know. Yeah, I'm not riding any bridges going to... Well, actually, you are. In uh, uh, Virginia Beach, because you had to ride that tunnel going across under the Chesapeake. Otherwise, it's, it's cool. It's a, it's, a, it's a great trip, and I liked it. It's not very far, and it was a very relaxing re vacation, and I enjoyed it. I want to like to do it again before the year out, but you know, falls here, and I may have to make a trip to go go to Cleveland. I actually want to do a special video show in Cleveland. And I really haven't done much justice on that. I'm, if, if I'd been thinking, I probably would have planned that trip a little, this Ocean City trip a little later in the fall, but I didn't. Because I think fall probably would have got some better deals from the hotels, a lot better deals. Because usually uh, when, it gets, uh, when it gets around fall time, the prices usually fall back a little bit. You get better deals that way because everybody, all the kids are going back to school. Not as many families back there. There's still people there, but it's not as many families. <clears throat> so, if I was smart, I would have waited a little later in the year, and I would have went and did shot video at the uh, near the RNC, which is what I should have been doing. Cause I was supposed to be home anyway. My mother had asked me. I still haven't been up there. But I'm gonna try to go. I'm gonna try to try to set something up for a September time frame to get back to Cleveland. I think I might have found some prices that might get me up there pretty soon. <sighs> okay. Now, um, well, I was talking about race relations, and I, really, honestly, we all know in this country where people come from different uh, backgrounds and all of that. But 
My thing is that we need to stop attacking each other's race. Now, when I say attacking each other's race, and attacking each other because of race, or just stop having any unnecessary reasons to attack each other. You know, I was talking yesterday about uh, a love lifeline, and I want to kind of expound on that a little bit. Because I kind of feel like if you at least uh, approach things from a place of love, you may be able to, uh, how can I put it, be able to get things done in a more positive approach. A lot of times we don't take the time to do that. Like I'm in traffic right now, and although I'm a little bit frustrated, I'm patient. It's not my patience I'm worried about. It's the patience I'm worried about other people that's around me that's driving because you don't know what their reactions are, you know, and how to drive. Because some people can drive pretty aggressive, and you're like, you're about, okay, I'm going to take my time and do what I got to do to get this traffic. But you got other people just playing like assholes, you know, and they're just going to just ride you no matter what. But. Sometimes you have to be the bigger man in terms of certain situations to try to make sure that cooler heads prevail. You know, the two preventable ones was the ones in uh, Baton Rouge and Minnesota where the cops, you know, two cops jump on one black man in Baton Rouge. All right. They pin him down, and then the one cop takes his gun out of his right holster and just shoots the guy, blasts him. Now, really, you didn't even have to go 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 that route. You know, the guy wasn't even fighting you. He didn't even have a gun on him. You know, at least he, he didn't pull out a gun on those guys. He didn't. You know, he had to pin down anyway. Why would you shoot him? Because of your... Uh, mentality that generations of people taught you that black people ain't nothing but animals. You know, that we ain't, you know, that we ain't as good as you, that we're not, you know, that we're savages and all that other bullshit. See, it's the mentality that's being taught by people of non color, white people. I mean, it's fact. You know, and that's the issue that I have, you know, or other people of color who've been taught the same type of mentality where, hey, you know, blah, 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 you know, just assuming we don't know how to conduct ourselves. And in both cases, particularly the one in uh, uh, Minnesota, the gentleman conducted himself very well and they still fucked with him, you know. And when I say cooler heads prevail, because I was in a situation with a cop where a cop threatened to shoot me if I made one false move. This was back in 1988. I'll never forget that. And do you know he still zapped me with a with a goddamn stun gun twice? Because I I started crying. I didn't know what was going on. I was young. I was in my twenties and I was scared. I really was scared. You know. I hadn't swung at the cop. I hadn't jumped out the car. I didn't even move out the car. I was, I was, yeah, I was a little, 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 I wasn't really upset. I was more, I was more, I was more scared. You know, and yet the cop fucked me anyway. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. And yet the cop was mad. For what? I didn't physically hurt you. You know? Because I think a lot of cops, as both black and white cops, you know, <laughs> let their anger get the best of them. And I think personally, they should be evaluated. There should be evaluations on cops anyway. You know, because you never know what's stressing them out. 
you know, and they'll take it out on, on, on innocent people. And I'm not saying all of them do, but we know we're talking about the ones who who have done this. That probably should have been evaluated. They should be an evaluation policy on cops, maybe each and after every arrest, you know, or maybe before they go out to ensure that, hey, you got cops that know how to use a cooler head when they're in certain situations and not overreact, you know. And that's what I mean by a love lifeline, you know, because we do have cops that overreact. I've seen instances, instances, instances of that. I was in a situation like that a couple of times. Myself, I've seen cops overreact. You know, I was with my dad uh, one time. We we're in Cleveland, and we we're going to my uh, brother's girlfriend's house or baby baby mama's house to go pick up my niece. And uh, my dad parked in a <clears throat> zone. We hadn't even got out of the car. He, he just parked in front of a zone, a no parking spot, just for a second. The cop get out of his car. He writes my dad a ticket before we get a chance to move the car. Now we had just pulled up. We hadn't even we hadn't even officially parked in the zone. <clears throat> but he figured, oh, you're in the zone. I'm gonna get you a ticket. I was like, what the fucking asshole. <clears throat> He didn't even have to give us a ticket. Or just say, just move. No, this motherfucker gonna give a, give a ticket out anyway. I was pissed. You know. But my dad, like, you know, that's all right, son. You know, it's okay. But I know the guy was wrong. You know, because we had just, we hadn't even parked the car. You know. I hadn't even parked. We had been up there a minute. And gave, gave him a ticket. I said, well, I'll be there. How you gonna get my ticket? He hadn't even parked. You know. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. And I, I'm proposing something like a love lifeline, man, where people try to have a better understanding of the situations so you don't let it get out of control. You know? And that just doesn't go just for cops. That goes for civilians, too. You know? Well, you know, and I mean, for people who are out there protesting, I said, do you really have to get carried away like that? You know? But then I, I hear people say, well, you know, you know, you have to understand, you know, they're angry, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <sighs> Having some anger is one thing, but overreacting is another. You know? And I think all of us need to have a, do a better job of trying to be more patient and be more understanding with each other, as well as, uh, the local and state federal uh, legislatures be put clamp, clamp down on people, particularly law enforcement who break the law. There has to be a conduct starting from the top levels on down to say no, you guys are not going to do this to our citizens. Our law abiding tax paying citizens who are paying taxes to you to protect them. No, we're not going to, no longer going to have you breaking these laws and thinking you can get away with it. No, at some point, you got to stop. At some point, uh, the people who, in, who, who, if, who enact these laws down to law enforcement need to be the ones who step up and say, we're not going to tolerate you guys getting off on this stuff. You guys will now face the consequences and there will be full accountability for your actions. That has to happen. That has to happen. You know. That's all I'm going to say about it right now. I mean, that's that's just the way I feel. I just wanted to, to get that off my chest, man, because I really like feel like, you know what? You know, that's what I mean by the love lifeline, man. You know, but people care enough to not let this continue to happen to people of color and of non-color, period. Questions or comments on anything I've uh, commented on tonight, 
please feel free to contact me personally. For all to hear at gmail.com. For all to hear on Twitter. And for all to hear TV in the comment box right here on YouTube. And uh, any Spreaker fans who are listening to me, feel free to contact me on my email at Twitter, which is uh, for all here at Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, guys, that's all I got to say for right now. I got more to say on the back burner. Um, likely, uh, there will be a, a blog talk radio show Friday night. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on some other stuff. I'm trying to upgrade uh, some equipment so I can do some more co- video content as well. All right. Uh, Spreaker fans, please uh, visit my uh, YouTube channel. It's for all to hear TV as well. And uh, I'll post your comments on there as well. All right, guys. Uh, this is DJ Wolf. I got more to say about this and other subjects in the back burner. I will be talking to you later.